have faith in God, whatever happens, happens for the good. You work hard, you will work harder over the next 20 days and I am sure that it will come out very, very good for you. But I want to share with you something which uh, is not on my LinkedIn profile and something which is not, uh, something which I feel that my parents and my school prepared me for. And I don't know if you realize that you are prepared for life. The greatest exam that you will face, that you will face, is the examination for life. Your teachers face it every day. Your parents face it every day, and you face it every day too. But you are facing it on an island called Anand Vidyamika. which is a safe environment and you have your wonderful teachers and uh, you, once you go back home you have your parents. But this examination for life is what education is really supposed to prepare you for. I studied at the St. Xavier's High School in Ahmedabad, came here to do my chemical engineering. I got in which was wonderful at that time. Second year of engineering, I had a lot of problems with my eyes. I almost went blind. And uh, underwent some surgeries which did not work. In the fourth year of engineering, I left engineering when uh, Faculty of Arts did my BA with literature. Probably the only such case, but I got a gold medal. Couldn't read. Somebody would read to me, I would read. I got an opportunity to go to the United States on a rotary study exchange. Uh, I thought I would undergo a surgery there. But I uh, was diagnosed with an cancer. I took, now this is where education steps in. I was not taken aback at all. It was just one more decision that I had to make. It was an inconvenience and nothing else. I made a plan. So that plan was maybe going to work, maybe not. I asked the doctor if it was okay for me to come back and take the treatment because you know the opportunity to go to the United States and get an eye surgery done would not come back to me. And uh, he said. Okay, but I want to see you back here in two months. Went to the United States, underwent a corneal transplant, that's my right eye, and uh, then took my treatment in the United States. I have taken, uh, to go to my radiation, I have taken, I have come rights, I have pitch right. But uh, anyway, that's what life is all about. And uh, now, 94. This was in 1984. 94, the cancer repeated itself. No problem. I already knew what to do. 2004, the cancer repeated itself. I knew what to do. Where education helped me, where the sanskar that my parents gave me helped me, is to extend life. This is already inculcated in you. I wish you a very smooth life, but I had an enjoyable life because I don't know what, you know, it's like driving in Baroda traffic. You don't know what's going to come out of there. Right? After the SIE FI, as one of you very rightly puts it. Now, that's not all I'm diabetic. That happened in uh, 94. As you can see, I'm a sweet guy. And uh, 2004, I got blood pressure. 2010, I went through a bypass surgery. I live alone. And uh, so the last time I had a problem with my heart, in the middle 
middle of the night, I simply called an old lab cab, sat down in it, ended up in LMB hospital and told them, I have a problem. And they said, where's the patient? I said, I'm the patient. They said, where are your relatives? I said, you are my relatives. The point is this. You have it in you to face what life has thrown. And you never know what life has thrown. There are quite a few things I want to tell you, but I also want to leave a little bit of time for you to ask me any questions that you might have. I would realize, if I was graduating out of this class, that I would want to live my life doing things that I like. I would not like to do things, you know, I would not like to do things because they are unhappy. I would not like to do things because everyone else seems to want, want to do it or do them. I would like to do things that I have the talent for. But then how do I know what I have talent for? You have to try a few things before you realize. Maybe you already realized. If you have, God bless you. If you haven't, you have a wonderful process of trial and error. I did about 10 jobs before I realized that training was what I wanted. I have been a trainer for 42 years now. And I still want to conduct training every day. I am happiest when I am speaking to people. In fact, I have to tell Purnima, please talk to me. Because uh, once I start talking, uh, I speak in days, I don't speak in minutes. I just love what I am doing. I wish you that. I wish that you find what you love doing. And that it is commercially useful. Because I am in love blowing up in the air, but is somebody going to pay me to do it? Therefore, I need to find something which, is, uh, which I love doing and which uh, you know, people will pay me to do. When you set your goals, and I know that earning a lot of money and being financially successful is very important. Set your goals in terms of the contributions that you can make. Don't be a taker, be a giver. And you'll be loved for it, and money is a byproduct of any worthwhile activity. The money will come. Therefore, don't think in terms of how much money can I make doing ABC. But how do I go about serving people and in the process taking a fair profit? Such organizations have survived for a very long time. Be you businessman or be you a professional. Service is very important. If I was graduating out of this class, I would really, really keep up with my people. I made the mistake of not keeping up with my teachers. One day I was walking in Ahmedabad in the old town and I ran into one of my teachers. God bless his soul, the man recognized me by name. Although I was meeting him after 35 years. And then I asked him, I said, sir, uh, and he said, do you remember my name? I said, of course, of course, Mr. Khatia, yeah, I remember your name. The new guy used to call me Barrow B because he taught us physics. And then he gave me a lot of news and I found out that uh, one of our teachers, Mr. Papadia, had passed away. And uh, nothing then, I wished him goodbye and I went away. And I went and sat down at some relative's place. And in two minutes, I just started crying. The reason I am able to stand here and speak to you is what happened. You cannot thank Sri You cannot thank your teachers. 
you are sitting here and thinking. And I'm very frank and forthright. This school, this is prime land. We put in a mall. And it's still a school. I was sitting, I was asking the teacher here, what does it cost to have this kind of an education? The number that I came up with is about 10 minutes. Working a couple of nights a little bit. Now, your parents invest with that kind of money. Now, it was a million rupees. They would have sent you to some other school. Not cost me as much. More students, and you know, it's all economics. If you have more students, then your feet are coming down. How can you possibly thank them? How can you possibly thank the teachers that are strict with you? The teachers that demand discipline. It's not easy to be harsh. It's not easy to be demanding. It's so easy to let go. So easy to be lenient. So easy to look elsewhere. You thank the teacher then. How can you thank a mother who wakes you up at 5 in the morning? Or a dad who wakes you up at 5 in the morning? Gives you a cup of tea or coffee in the hand and says, study. For that, he or she would have had to wake up at 4.30. Why should they? We take it for granted that these people will do all this for us. Thanks seems so inadequate. We are indebted for life and we will never be able to keep it that To read that debt, I think uh, what parents and teachers want ultimately is your success. They want you to be great. 125 years ago, Mahatma Gandhi cried. Can you imagine what the school people must feel even today? And I dare you and I challenge you and I bless you that a person of that kind of significance come out of this match. We are all unique. We are all amazing. We are all awesome. I have a t-shirt that says, normal people worry. I don't want you to be normal. Extraordinary people are not normal. They are not ordinary. They are extraordinary. By definition, different. We are all different. We are all unique. We are all incredible. And none of these words means normal. So I would like all of you to blossom and to make this, uh, you know, we are so fortunate that we are born in India and uh, we are, you folks are born and are living in India at a time when it's poised for greatness. What makes this country great and uh, I will tell you another thing about myself, I have a green card. People who give an arm and a leg to have a green card. I'll give it to whoever wants. Because I have no desire to live in any country except this one. And I'm sure there are several people here who've been there, come and realize Mira Bharat I'll tell you also why there are many things that are not great. There are certain the things that are great are incredible. Spiritual. I heard somebody mention that word. I am quite surprised that at the age of 17 or 18 you are mentioning the word spirituality or consciousness. That's of your school. That's of your parents. That is a sign which we tend to ignore. But in this country, being born in this soil, no matter which religion you are in, it doesn't matter. Spirituality is your birth. You are born with it, it flows through your veins. 
what will first do that? There have been many, many, many dimensions of success, not just money. Money is required. Please, please get rich as early as possible so that you can pursue other things. Because an army doesn't march on an empty stomach. And some of you mentioned Pani Puri and some expensive go away food tastes that uh, you know. Someone to apparently like to cook. And uh, so, whatever it is, uh, you may need money, but make it quickly travel the world. In spite of all these things that have gone on with me, I have uh, visited 25 countries, I have worked in three countries, and uh, I think travel is a truly enriching experience. To have used any opportunity to travel, first of all, India, then all over the world. Just be an all around great human being. You have the potential to be that. Oh, yes. If possible, avoid one thing, which is a total waste of time. Don't be in a great hurry to fall in love. It's the worst thing that you can do to yourself. I was with uh, worst from a time management point of view. Very pleasant. Because a lot of things are very pleasant. Eating funny putting on the street. Very pleasant. He give you the idea tomorrow. Right? Falling in love is not a great idea at this stage in your life. Chances are pretty high that you'll make a mistake. And regret it later. Took some notes. Um, yes, technology. Incredible amount of technology available today. And, uh, technology is meant to build bridges, not create walls. And I have seen families busy on the phone. First, it used to be the TV, and then. Today, family members are all busy with their phones. There was a lovely story of two friends who uh, met each other and one of them said, you know, this happened in Chennai. There for four days, there was a power cut. And uh, so one friend told the other, you know what, because of this power cut, my phone ran out of the charge and the laptop ran out of the charge. And I met my family. Nice guys, I must say. So in all this technology, please don't miss out on the truly wonderful people that are involved. Um, as I was saying, I would like to conclude by saying that each one of you is unique. God does not make garbage. God has incredible quality control. And your marks, your marks in an exam do not determine your value as a human being. You had great marks, you had the choice. You had great marks, you have the choice of which college you want to go to. I do wish that you get great marks. And I do wish that you work very hard in whatever time it remains in a sky that you are comfortable with. Here for your exams, your teachers would have told you, do the easy questions first difficult questions first. Whatever it is that suits you, follow that strategy, get the best possible marks, and go to whichever institution that you want to go to. But still, they will not determine who you are. They determine one point of time in which you appear to a certain set of questions. You answer a certain set of questions. And how well you did as per an exam. Sometimes I, uh, sometimes I suspect that examiners simply take all the papers and throw them. And the one that goes farthest gets the best marks and backwards. Just kidding. But the point is that uh, it's, you know, it's like a lot of Sometimes it's very scientific. Really 
Hopefully, if you get a yes, yes. Well, I think I'm welcome. <laughs>